TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are live. By the time you see this, we won't be. So just leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Right behind me, you see it? Little warning screen. Could be warranted, could not be warranted. I'm not sure. I never synced the video. Don't forget, man, twitch.com is where you can catch any of the live stream. Username is at the bottom of the screen. Don't forget, we updating. We are updating our setup. We are updating everything. Don't forget, uh, FIFA, FIFA, um, FIFA 25 comes out in September. It'll be the first game I stream. I've never, I don't think I ever played FIFA. Anyway, maybe. Anyway, man, don't forget, uh, we also got Patreon where we post five days per week. Um, sometimes six, man. This is 24 hours in the most dangerous city in Britain. I've met with gangsters. Real Peaky Blinders. This is Anton is here. This is his channel. I've never been here before, so let me hit the sub button. Let me hit a like button before I even go any further. Talk to me, though, Anton. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. True. This is Leodov, and today I'm in Glasgow, Scotland. This city has been considered the most dangerous in Europe for all... Oh, W... Ver See, this is the effort that I like. You speak another language and you got a voiceover. Long That's time, needed. because it's been known for its local criminal gangs that are still active even today. And right now, I'm going to get a ride out of town in order to meet one of these gangs. I don't know their names. I don't know our rendezvous points. I don't know how many people will come to our rendezvous. All I have is just a location on a map that I need to get to and a phone number. That's all. So, больше ничего. I'm calling an Uber, but the drivers are declining my order. I'm not gonna lie, that used to happen to me all the time in Chicago when I was Ubering places. They was not coming to certain parts. <laughs> yep. Yeah, coming. Hello. Hello. What is hella dramatic? W cinematography. Do you know the area we're going? To drunk chopper, yeah? Yeah. Don't worry about it, we'll take you there. Is it, is it a dangerous place? A bit rough area. It's a rough area. We're leaving downtown and the scenery changes dramatically. The streets are all empty with lots of graffiti and some repetitive patterns. And that's when I start feeling <coughs> that I probably shouldn't have gone on my own. I don't have my passport on me, I didn't take any cards, no cash. I mean, I've got my camera, my tripods, shooting equipment, basically. Smart man, don't never bring your passport on adventures. Leave it right in the hotel. I decided not to go nuts and come completely barehanded, without the bare minimum that I need to work, because I figured, well... What, uh, no? That if, you know, if I approach them and they agree to meet me, it would make no sense for them to just go on and rob me. You never know. I'm on my way to the neighborhood called Drum Chapel. The local crime rate is officially 105 crimes per 1,000 people. That's a real number that means that at least every 10th person becomes a victim of a crime here. Most often, it's a car theft, robbery, assault, mugging, and so on. This is Europe's darkest alley, so to say. I decided to ask the cab driver for advice on how to behave around the locals. You going to their houses or just sitting outside, like the park? Uh, so, uh, the address is uh, just the point on the street, yeah. I... So they gave you a pin drop? What they gave you? Coordinates? 
Do you think I shouldn't go to the house? <laughs> Don't go to the house? No, no, no. Really? No, trust me. What question are you asking them? Like what? Of course, I don't ask them. Like, do you sell drugs, guys, or not? <laughs> I don't. Ah, yeah. I don't ask this. Yeah. That kind of stuff. I think is the Instagram. Last year, the number of drug-related deaths in Scotland was the lowest in five consecutive years. And yet, that's still three times more than in the entire UK and a whole array of European countries. We reach the location and there's no one there. I'm getting pretty uncomfortable. And then an ice cream truck. Not gonna lie, man. Scotland be... <laughs> when I first started... Not when I first started, but like... I met somebody from Scotland and they was turned up truck stops right behind the cab and this creepy tune starts playing bringing up memories of horror flicks uh, an ice cream truck has arrived oh my god i see someone in a face mask Then a text message comes to my phone. Get out of the cab and walk to the end of the street. There are so many of them. I would have replied, you mean, you mean through all of these Air Maxes and bubble coats and balaclavas? <laughs> and then I understand that I shouldn't let the cab go because if something goes wrong, how am I going to leave this place? There's some movement around me and I really don't understand whether I should go and talk to them. Is it okay for me to start shooting now or not? Should I ask my cab driver now to stay while he's here because he wasn't planning to get involved in this thing? I get out of the cab and I start freaking out. Can you wait a little bit, yeah? I will speak to them and come back to you, okay? Then one guy from the crowd walks up to me. It all looks very strange. Why did- Oh, okay. As long as that one guy breaks off from the pack and comes and meets you and greets you and leaves with a handshake, you're good. They agree to meet me. Trust Why that. are there so many? Like a couple of dozen, but there's no going back now. Yeah, you with the gang them now. I've seen full families, faces pulled in, women getting the shade and all that. Crazy. This, this street right here, I've seen shootings happening in this street. Madness. This whole area is just crazy. Oh. yeah. Uh, guys, I I'm a bit flabbergasted because I never expected to get this kind of experience. Such engagement. Brilliant. This is Lyadov, and today we are in Glasgow, Scotland. For many years, Glasgow has been called Europe's crime capital. I ain't gonna lie, man. When it, when, when, I'm pretty sure when you hit up your contact, and they did their research and looked at your channel, 100% everybody in the hood showing up. You can expect it. Because everything that has been happening here until 2007 was completely crazy. The murder rate was comparable to that in places like Costa Rica, El Salvador, Mexico, Venezuela. You know, places where a real drug war is going on. Ever since then, the crime rate in Glasgow has fallen by 25%, <laughs> but the gangs have stayed around, and the gang culture too. Many gangs have been here for over a hundred years, and investigative reports say that there are around 170 active gangs H, appreciate the sub or resub. Today Talk in to Glasgow you. with 3,000 to 5,000 members each. And today I am to meet some of them. This is Leodov reporting from Glasgow for the people. watching this dude is a top tier editor are you subscribed to our channel not yet the sad thing is no i am sub and liked the answer now we can The only positive thing, like the, the, the smart thing you did, you met up during the day. At the end of the day, the day. A guy in a face mask approaches me. He seems pretty friendly, so far so good. Right. 
Yeah. Can I already start filming? You can start filming. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He acts like some sort of a press secretary for the gang. Like he's telling me the protocol for the upcoming meeting. Please, Bill. Oh, okay. Some more footage of the police. Should my car wait for me? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. How long do we spend here? 40 minutes. 40 minutes? Yeah. Well, I guess I'm going. The whole situation looks like I've come to a gang meeting only. I came alone, and the gang I'm meeting has sent 20 or 30 guys. I'm coming closer, and I get no reaction whatsoever. I'm wondering how to start talking to them and decide to take it step by step. Guys, can I record now? Uh, yeah. Yep. Most of them look no older than 20, 25, some 18 at most. Some are putting up a show, doing tricks on their bikes. Some are avoiding the camera. Bad boy types, all of them. They I feel like this is normal behavior. Like this is this is normal behavior. Nothing out of ordinary is happening right now. You would be more fearful if you went to meet and there was only three people. But since there's this many people, they're just trying to they're just trying to put on a show for you. You know what I'm saying? They look very You're good. They got the yeah. They got the. What is this called? What? What? They got money. If they they got the the electric spikes. They got the scooters out. They got the four by fours out. Two of them. It kind of feels like it's their neighborhood and they are in charge here. I still have trouble gauging their take on me. They don't seem unfriendly, neither do they seem friendly. It feels more like they're still screening me and figuring out whether they can trust me. Nice to meet you guys. I'm Anton. What's your name, bro? I'm Anton. Anton, bro. Yeah. Nice to meet you. <laughs> the tallest of them appears to be the friendliest bloke, and he's probably the oldest. He is part of every conversation. He makes jokes, laughs at them, and he's overall pretty friendly. <laughs> This guy seems to be in charge. He keeps ordering other blokes to shut up when they say something they shouldn't. How can I call you? Diego. Diego? Yeah. Okay, great, great, Diego. Can you please tell me how long you've been... Does he realize he has a face mask on? Why is he covering it with his the sweater, too? Part of this group. My okay. full wife. My full wife, bro. Full I'm 25. Well, since you were five? Since, I, no, since I've been zero. <laughs> I was right about that. Diego is in charge of this group. He gave me two conditions. First, not to expose anyone's faces on the footage, although no one here is recognizable anyway, and to blur all the license plates on the vehicles, bikes or buggies <coughs> alike. Condition number two is that he tells me who or what I can or cannot film. He said that I have to film this dude who's got his entire face covered and show him as an example. He's been a faithful and loyal member of the gang since he was eight. Eight. That's, that's an electric loyal. Yeah. Okay, what else? Number one rule is stay loyal, eh? Fuck knows, mate. I don't even know any other rules, mate. I don't know. Yeah, loyalty is always a very, 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 very precipent. I don't even know if that's the right word I'm looking for. Loyalty is, is above all. Oh, man, I love you. You keep that love. Are you loyal? Right. Don't be a rat. Don't talk to them. What does it mean to be a rat? Talk to police. Rat your way, stealing. Don't be stealing. Yeah. I've seen, I've seen, I've seen cunts losing their full hand. On a local scale, this is a pretty legendary gang. Diego says it was here long before he was born. Today, the gang has an Instagram account where it positions itself as a garage-based music band. The guys join the gang pretty early, mostly when they're around 10 years old. They are all here on equal footing and consider the gang their family. And they are all part of this hood. Look, three local guys walk by and they all look like they know this crowd. They even shake hands with some of the dudes. I'm sure they know their names and where they live. All this show Definitely. with the masks is just for me. How can I call you? JP. JP? JP. Can you please tell me, what is it like for you to be in this team, in this group? This team, it's a family, mate. It's a family. When you're on this team, mate, 
Yo, untouchable. That's how it feels, not all of it. Uh -huh. Aye, untouchable, bro. On the hood, yes? In, the, in this neighbourhood? Aye, aye, aye. Nobody will touch you if you're in part of this team. Aye, nobody will touch you. To be honest, I understand uh, half of what they say. Well, maybe 70% or so. Because the Glasgow dialect is the least understandable of all the dialects I have ever heard. The accents... Oh, God. Like, I'm having a hard time right now. <laughs> On top of the mask, and then the double coverage of the mask. He's I'm trying, strong, but one word stood out and was easy to get. Normal life of your group, what, what, what's it like? What do you do? Hate it, mate. Hate it. Hate Money. It. Money? Money's remote, mate, aye. Money's remote. Uh, like... So the group is also earning money, yeah? Aye. Aye. Money, aye. Could say so, mate, aye. Madness, mate. The life we live's crazy. Stolen cars. It's crazy up here, mate. Uh-huh. So... Is this like... You do this by tasks, or I mean, like someone decides what he's doing on uh, uh, every day. It's just everybody's just money motive, you know what I mean? So everybody's just thinking, what can we do here for money? It's hungry bellies, everybody's got to eat. So it's a big team we've got to feed, you know what I mean? Can I ask you about uh, the how much money you get, more or less, per month, per day, per year? <sighs> These guys didn't specify in what other ways they make money. I go on yeah, a numerical amount, it, it would have been crazy. And try to figure out whether they've got a structure. Is there a structure in the group? For example, is there any main body or his. Uh, is there, I mean, like. Are there positions? You understand what I mean? Yes. Yeah. There's, there's positions, yeah, but there's, what, there's people at the top, but they, they don't even stay in the country, you know what I mean? They, oh, really? they don't live here, no. They live, they live abroad. Oh, the main... Uh... The main... So it's like an OCG. Very structured. And you guys are the... bottom of the totem pole, is what I would guess. Respectfully, though. No, I go. Foot soldiers are always the lowest. You might be like general to energy, but like and people they love, they love away. You know what I mean? Everybody here, these are all just the money makers. Mm -hmm. the right. So the bottom of the totem pole. Or, or like second to bottom. Soldiers, not in. My understanding. No, 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 bottom. Thing is that they all consider each other brothers, and the gang not only protects its members from other gangs, but also takes care of them, makes sure they've got food on the table, and even pays their debts. Can you remember some situation in which the team helped you? Maybe some situation in your life, in your family, in your I don't know. When I was younger, I used to get myself in debt. And it used to oh, How much did you do? Thousands, 30, 40, 000, 50, 000, oh. it's just all stupid shit. Things gone missing and all mad shit. Watches and all mad shit. And it just, it gets paid there and then. And get paid always. Oh. What's more, the gang will also have a say in things like who its members may or may not start a family with. One of the, part, a part of the group. Really? Really? So it's not like an arranged relationship but like you got to get the okay to have this girl as your girl or or to have to to initiate baby mama protocol you know what i'm saying group decides to marry some bad girl who is like who doesn't have good reputation if you know what i mean oh, that, 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 that's not happening it's not happening no 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 so you mean you, you don't let your guys to to shag sluts no fuck that you need a good girl <laughs> yeah. ah I actually second that. That is not a bad thing. You can't let your bro go down that road. Not even in, in this is just guy code. If your girl is the neighborhood bicycle, you when your guy is supposed to tell you like, hey, hey, you don't want that smoke. You do not want that type of lifestyle. <laughs> Cause at the end of the day, you can't save nothing. That's tough. In, in, in Russia, I don't know about this. For example, if someone kisses the girl who is slut, yeah, and the team knows he's getting punishment for this. Does he uh, kisses? I'm not gonna lie, that's diabolical. 
You definitely gotta stop your bro from doing that. Do, do we have the same? Oh no, they, every, they all shag slots, not in. Oh. They all shag slots every day, but I mean, like, wife wants to have a kid to them, not I mean, fuck that shit. Oh. The group has three main rules. One, be loyal to the group. Two, fight for your own. And three, don't be a rat. That is, don't snitch, don't inform the police, don't steal from your buddies. So, for example, in Russian groups, there is a way, uh, for example, if one of the group decide, uh, does something that the group doesn't accept, he's being cancelled from the group. Do you also have this uh, procedure? They would get machete but they thought they would lose hands, fingers, mums and aunties would get machete. I don't know how much of the- I ain't gonna lie, whoever this, this firm or this, uh, this group of people right here, yeah, they got money. Nobody in this group is, is, is down bad. Like, everybody is dressed with the top hood apparel. Bubble coats Montclair, though. Not just regular out the mall bubble coats. These is Montclair bubble coats. They got a, he could put on a Nike Tech. Uh, he could put on a Nike Tech outfit, but he got on a Hugo Boss Tech outfit. You know what I'm saying? This is for show and what's real and we'll probably never know. Are these guys really capable of such bloody revenge that involves cutting women? I mean, seriously? Just the gang. Montclair, Yeezy. I said Montclair, I didn't mean to say Montclair. Don't nobody get on Montclair. They might be, these might be new, new people. I think they've relaxed a bit, and now it looks like they've decided to put up a bit of a show, doing tricks and burnouts on their motorbikes like boys do, competing to see who can do the cooler trick. Yes, ma'am. Here is a big open lawn of sorts with green grass where the guys ride their motorbikes and buggies, doing tricks and all sorts of maneuvers. Here's a guy doing a wheelie. Well done, bro. They just go to a spot with some space and grass where they can race each other or just drive around and have fun. You know, this is a stark difference between the, 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 the stuff that I normally watch on Glasgow. It don't really be showing the, 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 this factor. It'd be like, it'd be real cappy. But 95% of the time, this is what be going on. <laughs> the guys kicking it, chilling, hanging out. Then that other 5%. Don't get me wrong, getting money at this same time too, because it was like 20 of them. And they own electric bikes. They probably dip off, do what they need to do, come back, kick it. Dip off, do what they need to do, come back, kick it. Like Fun like boys do. But that's the other 5% could get diabolical though. Then the tallest guy says he can speak to me. He puts on some weird oversized sunshades for the interview and starts talking to me about using for many years now and then suddenly stops as abruptly as he started. What are the worst feelings that you feel sometimes? Just that we in the morning and just having to get the first one under your belt. Yeah, I, I, I understand. I'm not saying. Get it? Mine. What was he and saying? then Diego suggests we all go somewhere. I don't know whether it's a sign of trust or some maneuver and they're taking me somewhere, but overall they seem to be pretty friendly towards me and have shown no aggression. So I get in the car. I notice a Louis Vuitton purse on the floor pop me and have shown they're taking me somewhere, but over. I don't know. I don't know if I want him driving. Overall, they seem to be pretty friendly towards me and have shown no aggression. So, I get in the car. I notice a Louis Vuitton purse on the floor, possibly stolen. Four guys get in the car with me. One drives and three in the back. I realize that if something goes wrong, it will be hard for me to get out. They Most definitely turn on the music and the whole cavalcade blasts through the neighborhoods breaking the speed limits which is 30 miles per hour 
off the whole place Got my front door raided by the gunners They just want me banged up I just want my bands up I don't wanna have to ride up mm. Where I'm masked up I don't wanna shoot Who's that, Booter B? That Booter B rapping? I don't wanna stab Tell them don't push me on empty out the map our car is followed like by it. all other guys on buggies, bikes, and motorbikes. And it's just a regular city street. Look, here are some old ladies walking and go bikes and motorbikes. And it's just a regular city street. Look, here are some old ladies walking and girls talking on the sidewalk. And no one really pays any attention to us. Like, it's nothing unusual. Just a local gang riding through. Business as usual. Nothing to gawk at. Meanwhile, I'm still a bit uneasy, wondering whether... You gotta remember, yeah, you're definitely in their neighborhood. This is this is a normal occurrence. Probably. We're just taking a ride for fun, or whether they're taking me to some deserted place or a back alley. You can normally tell what a, what, what a group of people are on. I feel like this particular group of people getting too much money to be playing them type games with you. That would bring way too much unwanted attention. This is me and Cena. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Very straight oh, north, man. What, what do you mean, man? Said what is the shit? This shit, this shit, this shit. That's what I'm saying. They won't call me out, Spock. They won't call me out, Spock. Oh, okay. Where do you want to go? Let's go. The Drum Chapel's gang is not the only one in Glasgow. There are dozens of them. Oh, they're called the Drums. Oh yeah, that's the neighborhood, Drums Chapel. Okay. In the city, or to be precise, 150. And each is unique in its own way. I was pretty much shocked to find this out because I thought gangs were common in places like Latin America, Mexico, the US slums, but Scotland? The land of Harry- US slums? Nah. <laughs> it, it, not just the slums in the US either. It's them was everywhere. Potter, notoriously bad weather, and the end. They're more aggressive in the slum, in the in the, uh, in the, in the slums, but they're everywhere. For a festival with its stunning artistic performances, but as it turns out, almost 10% of the local population are members of Glasgow gangs, and it's been that way for years, over a century even. Gangs have their own rules, their code, and even culture, and their methods are often extremely brutal. For example, local gangs have a particular way to deal with their victims that leaves distinctive marks, telling the person was dealt with by the gangsters of Glasgow. Guys, if you Glasgow smile, he talking about, ain't he? Like my video, and if you like what we're doing, I would really appreciate if you support us on Patreon, on Pioneer, or on PayPal, and we try to make even more great films from a new dangerous places for you. Thank you. All the links are in the description. Please donate. So we've got the Glasgow kiss. Glasgow kiss, what is it? A headbutt. Uh, right? right, and then the Glasgow smile right. is when mobsters used to slice up people's faces um, from the Glasgow kiss. That uh, is a headbutt. I thought it was something else. I've heard it said to be a, like a headbutt, but I thought it was something else, something more diabolical than that. Their ears all the way down to their mouths. Oh. So um, I think this is before, I'm not sure what came first, the Joker or the Glasgow smile, but that was a big one. You still see people walking around with those scars today. Really? Yeah, there's a guy in um, uh, Sons of Anarchy. Uh -huh. There's an actor and he's from Glasgow and he's got the, the scars. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah he did it, uh, so it, oh wow. Yeah, really. yeah so say, it's, yeah. Still, it's still a thing. Um, sometimes they're very proud of their scars. Sometimes I'm not gonna lie, I always thought bros, that was fake and it was just a part of makeup for him. But apparently, I knew he had, that's crazy. Mm. They're very ashamed of it. This is Rona. She volunteers to help in the prisons of- Ashamed of it. Dude, I would hate to get this. Oh my God. This is Rona. She volunteers to help in the prisons of Glasgow. Unlike me, she sees real criminals in the flesh and blood almost every day. Well, my idea of them is taken from shows like Peaky Blinders or the 2015 movie Legends. By the way, Peaky Blinders were a real street gang, only they were based in Birmingham, not Glasgow. They operated in the late 19th and early 20th century and engaged in robbery, racketeering, illegal bookmaking, and control of gambling. The members of the gangs were in fact real kids between 13 and 16 years old, but they really dressed like killing 
Cillian Murphy's hero in the show. Peaky Blinders frequently wore tailored suits, silky scarves, and starched collars, heavy boots, and, of course, their signature hats. The popular story behind the name Peaky Blinders says that the gang members would stitch disposable razor blades into the peaks of their flat caps, the kind they wore in Birmingham, like this, so that they could be concealed but also used at any time as weapons, so they could cut someone's face or neck at any moment. But the real story behind the name is honestly a lot simpler. It was all completely different. You see, disposable razor blades were patented by Gillette in the USA in the early 20th century, and they didn't make it to market in the UK until much later, so that's too late. Also, it was a rare and expensive commodity, not the type street gang members could afford. And one more compelling reason is that a razor blade in a hat is absolutely useless as a weapon in a street fight. Just imagine someone is about to attack me and I have to engage. What do I do? Do I grab my hat with my hand like this so I could use it? And then what? See, if I'm holding it like this, I can't really use it. I must change my grip, right? To do that, I'll need to use my other hand. And while I'm tossing my hat from hand to hand, I'm pretty sure the other guy will have had enough time to take me out. If I try to grab my hat from behind and use it to cut like this, it doesn't work either, because this way I open my head and my face to any blow, which is against fighting logic. In a fight, you've got to keep your right hand in front of you. No street fighter in their right mind would willingly remove their right hand from in front of their head. So they actually ne uh, unless you fight Southpaw. never use razor blades in street fights. What did they use? Their fists, heavy rocks, sticks and knives that are a lot handier in a street fight than a razor blade. So why Peaky Blinders? Fashion seems to be the more reasonable answer. It's possible that the name caught on because the gangsters like to wear their signature flat caps, with a peak not facing the front, but over one eye, as a blinder of sorts, which gives us the Peaky Blinder moniker. So, most likely, it had nothing to do with razor blades concealed in hats, but with fashion and elegance. And those street gangsters really valued an elegant look. After World War II, former street gang members returned home to Glasgow and became real gangsters with firearms, hand grenades, and all sorts of serious weapons. Glasgow emerged as the crime capital of Scotland. By 1960, 40% of all crimes in Scotland were committed in Glasgow, even though the city's population was only 1 million people against over 5 million in the entirety of Scotland. Violence on the streets was so common that even ordinary people were used to it and viewed it as just a part of life and even entertainment. The last public hanging happened in this park. Oh, really? Yes, in this park, just over there. Um, but yes, the last public execution, so we did them out here for everyone to enjoy. He'll jump me to tell you. about him. So, Peter Emanuel was arrested for the rape and murder of two 17-year-old girls and the massacre of two Lanarkshire families, one of which happened on New Year's Day. Peter, Doris and their 10-year-old son were ruthlessly slain and the killer lived in the house with the corpses for up to a week, eating their leftover Hugmini meal and feeding their cat. And uh, this park was also the home of um, the Glasgow Fair. And during this time, that was also the spot for public executions. And it wasn't a coincidence that public executions happened in the same place. Street vendors made a roaring trade selling food and keepsakes from the day. Keepsakes being rips item of clothing of the hanged person or cuttings of the rope that was used to hang them. Oh, that's, that's a little bit wild, ain't it? I have an appointment here. I expect one of the most legendary gangsters of his time to come for an interview with me. His name is Ian McDonald. He was famous for his knife fighting skills and for winning lots of street fights. He was one of the him, best. Right? We know who that is. Here he is, stepping out of a cab. He looks well-groomed and in good shape, like a respectable retired yeah. gentleman. Okay. That's not what I thought a former gangster would look like. Yeah, you're looking great. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. But today, McDonald lives an ordinary life. And you know what? He had his first baby when he was 60, and his second child at 62. Uh, a nickname, Blink. Hey, that's rough, but salute. 
and uh, he had enough smarts to know not to bring any kids in the world when he was doing what he was doing. They were saying uh, I could slash somebody in the blink of an eye, and as you can see, that scar. Oh. Uh, they were trying to cut my throat. I got that scar, but but ma many years later, I would have a bomb under my car. Know what I mean? You? Yeah. Really? <laughs> so that 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 was something I had in common, but. Unfortunately, it wasn't blew up, you know what I mean? As I'm sitting down with him, asking questions, I keep wondering whether it's really true that he was a real gangster with blood on his hands. Is he really talking about himself? My mother and father were, were, were workers. Allegedly. I, I didn't come from a criminal family. Mm -hmm. And uh, my, my dad was very strict. He, 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 would, he would hit us, you know what I mean? If we, we stepped to the line. Up to the age of 14, I had a, a happy childhood. But when I was 14, so this would be about 1975. Uh -huh. Yeah, I would see everybody then in Glasgow. The, the older boys, the older boys to me were 16, 17. They were going about with these big Crombie coats and uh, these bother boots. And uh, I'd see a lot of gang fights then. It was, it was very violent. And so Ian McDonald joined a street gang called Proven Mill Young Team. He was sent to juvenile correctional facilities. He would run, then got caught, spent time in isolation, did his time, and went straight back to the gang. By the time he turned 18, he was wearing a silk scarf and a crombie coat himself and pulling off jewelry scams. He was a gifted actor, and he would enter the store posing as a rich customer in need of an engagement ring. I'd speak, I'd speak kind of a polite and I'd say I was getting engaged to a girl, could I see a ring? And they would go to the, the window, bring it out, and as soon as they bring it out, they'd go, what one is it? But soon enough, he got tired of the act and wanted more money and less fuss. So he simply started breaking into the jewelry stores through the windows. When his appetites grew, he switched to robbing cash in transit vans. How, how much did you get per one, per one, one? Well, at, at the beginning, it was, it was like 10,000 pounds, 20,000 pounds. Mm -hmm. Finally, he started to make headlines in the criminal news on a regular basis. That's when he became known as Blink, one of Glasgow's most notorious gangsters. He was respected by the underworld, hunted by the police, and everyone in the city knew his name. And he had a code of honour of his own. I was gaining a reputation in Proven Mill. And uh, I, I don't like to admit this, but it was just but, but, but the way I was, you know what I mean? And it was the way the culture was, their violence. I was uh, slashing people with Stanley blades. So you, you, were, you, were, you were good at stabbing fights? People call me a thug. Well, that's it. I was a thug. Uh, I, I wouldn't go for people's neck, because I didn't need, I know that might sound careless. So you didn't kill people, you were slashing? Yeah, you know, I was slashing people. That This is at an early age. Blink had a chance to make hit. The users out there one of the main people. His way to the very top of the criminal world. At one point, he was approached by none other than Arthur Thompson himself, the feared godfather of the Glasgow criminal world. He was actually dubbed Godfather. He was violent and he uh, knew no He is known to have forced the van of two of his enemies off the road into a lamppost, resulting in both men's death. But that wasn't all. Thompson's wife later stabbed one of the men's widows to death after breaking into her home. Thompson never paid for this crime because witnesses refused to testify. He went on to become Glasgow's top drug lord. And by the 1990s, he was in charge of a drug market worth 300 million pounds. Back in the day, there was a lot of residential construction underway in Glasgow, and Thompson came up with the idea to deliver drugs to these new neighborhoods using ice cream. I gotta trim my beard, my mustache, it's like... Cream vans. They didn't just sell ice cream and sweeties, they also sold bread and milk and cigarettes and newspapers. And in the 80s, the criminals got involved and some of these ice cream vans started selling drugs. A certain friend's uncle, who'll remain nameless, he told me that his particular ice cream van, he'd walk up, he'd ask for a 99 with a flake, they'd put the baggie in the cone underneath the ice cream. So basically, all ice cream van drivers did the Mafia's bidding until 18-year-old Andrew Doyle refused to comply, and he and his family were targeted with utterly horrific consequences. That act of blood-chilling... I ain't no saying no. 
cruelty was met with public outcry, not only in Glasgow, but in the entirety of Europe and all over the world. The criminals went as far as setting the home of Andrew Doyle on fire while the entire family was sleeping. And out of nine people, only three survived. The man himself, his father, two brothers, and his sister with a kid, all of them died in that fire. That line, you said, but this, this messed up. Arthur Thompson was also off the sand, no? the target of several attempts on his life, but he survived, and he wanted Blink for his dirty schemes. Thompson wanted to make Blink one of his enforcers, but... Why would you reject this, uh, his offer? But I'll, I'll tell you why. At first I thought, well, why would he want to recruit somebody like me, a young boy, when he's supposed to run all of Glasgow? Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, I, 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 I would just become a debt collector for him. So, so, sorry, if, uh, you didn't want him to use you? Yeah, well, I get you right. Yeah, yeah I, that, that's exactly uh, mm -hmm. the, the right word to mm -hmm. use. I was going to be a millionaire, and my plan was to go to Sp Spain, my bear, mm. <laughs> and live the champagne lifestyle. I was going to be spending the next 10 years of my life in the English maximum security prisons uh, behind grey gray walls and the toughest prisons that England had to offer because everything went wrong on the day. One day, Blink was approached with an offer he couldn't refuse. In case of success, he'd be set up for the rest of his life. A friend of mine who was on the a run for prison, he escaped. He actually escaped for prison, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He was doing 10 years and uh, escaped in a butcher van. And uh, he came up to the pub and he asked me would they be interested in doing a bank job in England for six million pounds. For six million pounds? Six million, that, that, that was the figure he quoted. Wow. So didn't take you long? It didn't take me long. How long? What, next day? I, after two minutes. Oh. <laughs> come on, come on, come on, guys! It's interesting that it's a regular neighborhood and people go about their lives as usual. There are guys in the street, like over there, there's a man and he is just watching all of this. What's this what is the guys took me to this part in Drum Chapel <coughs> with a pretty unremarkable house, except for a large mural on its wall with a smiling face of a young lad. Once we're there, the guys take out their phones and start taking pictures of the mural, of themselves and me with the mural. I was confused as to what was going on until Diego enlightened me. This is the portrait of their former gang leader, who they literally worship. What happened? They got muddled. Oh. He got stabbed in his sleep. You know who did it? Yeah, he's a rat bag. I'm not going to mention any names, but his full family have been terrorised, moved out of the drum, and they've been terrorised in the jail. That's all I'm going to say. Oh. For the boy, for the king of the drum. Allegedly. I don't know what this young chap did for all of them, but they are still loyal to him. He's just a madman. Nobody would say boo to him in the drum, because he would get fucking terrorised that same night. He's the king born of drum chapel. Aye. <coughs> Now he's an he's icon now, yeah? Now he's looking down on all of us, giving us all good luck. Do you often re recall him? Do you often re remember him? Every day. Oh. He meant a lot for you? Yeah. I would assume that uh, this is a like, Christian or Catholic community. Like, this is like, in, in the reality of it is, Bro is an active gang leader, probably doing diabolical things or the reason for diabolical things. So it's very doubtful that he was he's looking down on anyone. R.I.P. But the reality of it is, as a mainly Catholic or Christian community, like he's probably looking up. Respectfully though, like don't don't take it as disrespect. I'm not being disrespectful. Like I'm just putting it in like real terms here. Like at some point you got to come to reality. What did he teach you? To 
be a gangster. Showing everybody how things are done. Bravery. Yeah. He was the bravest cunt here. <laughs> I guess they brought me here so I could pay respects to their spiritual leader. Well, what can I say? I feel like I'm in Grand Theft Auto with a group of racers. But who am I kidding? I'm too old now for a group like this. I understand that Diego became the gang's leader after this smiling guy's death. The leader of this group, my big, big, my big brother, so he is. Ah, your, your relative? Yeah. Your father or who, who, your big brother? He's, he's just a close relative, but he's like family. Ah. I would say he's my brother. Then they get in the car again and tell me we're going to some house. Just me. We're off to some house that seems to be important for the guys. The guys keep telling me we'll go to a house. What house? Why? The What's trap. going on there? It's getting it's dark trap. soon. It's been way more than the 40 minutes we initially agreed to spend together. I feel like it's been at least three or four hours, and I really don't understand why these guys are still hanging around with me. We finally get to a residence, and the guys tell me to come in with them, and I really don't like the idea. Also, my cab driver's warning comes to mind. Do, do you think I shouldn't go to the house? I think I'm not a lot, guys. Really, just because of the journalism rules. If I give you the mic, uh, the, the camera, can you just give me some tour? Yeah. Yeah. Is it on? You just, you just, you just go. Is it on? Just now? Yeah, it's just on. Yeah. Sorry. Press the button down now, bro. No, no. Don't worry, bro. No, you know what it's meant. Just because of my journalism rules, I cannot enter the house. Can you know? Unfortunately. But the camera can go with inside and it's all right. So I tried to wiggle my way out of this invitation and waited all out outside. But the guys obviously seem confused why I'm taking so long and insist that I simply come in. Then. A woman comes out. She seems a bit off, but it's her house. I ask for her permission to enter, secretly hoping she'll say no. Oh man, no, with this, this, this. Okay. No. Turn it to me. So I'm, I'm asking for permission to enter your house. Are you okay with this? Hi. Okay. Yeah? yeah? Yes. For, for, I will record. Uh, I wish that quartier of. Just a regular place. Curtains are drawn, nothing special. This ain't no goddamn regular place. This, <laughs> this is diabolical entrance right now. We all from the outside know what this is, eh? Sure, not so dirty as one could expect, by the way. Oh, not very roomy. A TV set here, a drying rack there. Better. What's your, what are your names, guy? Oh, Jackie. Jackie and? <laughs> some, 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 some substance on the floor. Jackie and Robo. How long you've been addicted? Um, but three years. Three years. It's just a place of some friends of the gang. That's all. For whatever reason, Diego decided to introduce me to them so they could tell me a bit about their life. These are the hardest life. I really hard. What is the hardest thing about your life, Tim? Money. No money. No money. What did you do before you started? What was your profession earlier? We know that not I. I was a nurse. You were a nurse. I. Oh, why did you quit? Addiction. Um, I go. I took anorexia. So no, no, okay. I go. I starved myself to five and a half stone. What are your daily routine like? What do you do just? Like, what, what is your normal day nowadays? No, just sit in the house and smoke crack. Smoke crack, mate. Did you ever think about quitting? Did you ever try? I can quit. It's no. It's no. It's no physical withdrawals. It's no sore. Did you try to quit? Right. Aye. Yeah. I've quit before, but. What was the maximum days you didn't uh, get it? Or oh, hours? How many years you were clean? Uh, seven. Yeah, I go to prison one time. Rob is in the same business as the other guys who brought me here. Theft and robbery. I done a petrol station when I was 16 and got four years for that. Yeah, did you do it on your own or with someone else? Oh, this is a... Customer. Just on myself. How did you do this? Just went in and done it. You had a gun? Aye, it was in a different town, but I went in and done that. Um, and that's when I started my criminal history. And then I see them in the classroom. For drugs. <laughs> what do you feel in the moment? Can I ask you? Anxious. 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 Uh, so you. you mm hmm. Mm hmm. 
It's been a long time since our last dibble and dabble. You, you. She getting. You did some movements, yeah. This is this, this is what you feel, yeah. I, I strung out. Agitates me. Agitates me. She's agitated. Agitated. Jackie seems to be going into one of her fits. She starts rocking back and forth, and Rob also seems to be losing the meaning of what I say. His stare becomes absent. The guys decide it's time to wrap it up. Okay. It's all good, mate. No, it's all good, mate. It's all good, it's all good, it's all good. It's all good, it's all good. It's all good. Yeah, they need their next fit. They're getting too angry about it. Keep giving it, man. Oh, right, then. Just don't. Yeah, I'm just their house, but it ain't their house at the same time. So, me and another friend, that was crazy. Mate, we took the guns and overalls, masks, uh, walkie-talkies, things like that, and uh, we travelled down to England by the train, and we met my friend who was on the run. He'd already set up a base. We get down there, and he says that this caravan site, this huge caravan site, that was the base. So, we, we, we were there. When Blink said caravan, he meant a trailer. It turns out trailers were great as a base for criminals planning a heist and could also be used to stake out the target 24-7. For a few days, then we were watching this bank. Their target was the National Westminster Bank's HQ in England, known as NatWest. This bank is still active and popular even today. It's got offices all this, over Great Britain. And their bank robbery plan was pretty simple. What was the plan? The, the, plan, was, the plan was broken during the night. And when the staff were coming in in the morning, they, they were getting taken hostage. So, 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 so that happened. That happened. And my friends were in there mm. with a spy hole and they could see this vault. Ah, wow. So they could see the vault, jumping out, run, rounding them up and taking the money. Mm -hmm. I'm sad to say <laughs> it all went disastrously wrong. The vault getting opened rounded up the bank staff on the floor, shouting, where's the fucking money, blah, 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 blah. They weren't messing about, and nobody was saying anything. So one of my friends fired a shotgun into the ceiling, and plaster came down. I remember this And story. unfortunately, it hurt a girl in the face. So, yeah. so he was grabbed, and he was running in the, the vault, and he had his head put through the, the bars. And my friend took a shotgun, and he says, I'm no fucking about. He says, open this. And he was trying to say, none of us have got the key. The guy that's got the key is late for work. The dude was simply late for work. How do you like that? The bank is attacked by robbers. There's gunfire, hostage situation. Someone got wounded. And the key person who's got the key to the vault is late. He know. woke up late or got into a traffic jam, whatever. And when McDonald and his buddies realized that they're not getting access to the money without that key, they simply fled the scene. And that's what happened two hours after that and somebody jumped out the bushes and the guy was about six feet tall he had a leather jacket and he had a gun it looked like a magnum gun to me or a Colt 45 he's saying police mm -hmm. he says get down on the fucking ground so by this time my whole world just fell apart you know what I mean I was handcuffed to my friend mm -hmm. he put us in this caravan so we kept looking out <laughs> Open the curtain and looking out, and people were walking over to him. And I says to my friend, See, the next time somebody goes over to him to talk, mm -hmm. I'm not sitting here waiting to get 20 years. And my friend says, He might shoot you. And I says, I don't give a fuck. I says, I, I'm, I'm not prepared to do all this time. Ian managed to escape from the police van right under the cop's nose. His buddy didn't want to take the risk and went to prison for 19 years. He's gone by now. Jeez. Ow. So oh. then, then I discovered the jacket I changed and I realised I just had this pound. And I realised, Christ, I'm standing there and I'm saying to myself, I'm supposed to have a million pound. I've got one pound. <laughs> know what I mean? So, and I managed to get to this place called Brixham. It's a fishing village. So I got to there and I was hiding in woods and I managed to get a phone call. I stayed there at 12 o'clock at night and somebody came from London, picked me up. 
So, where do you think Blink went to the very next day after his escape? Back to Glasgow. He knew that he was wanted by the authorities, but he had a lot of connections at home and it was easier to maintain a low profile there. In case he ran into the police, he got himself a handgun and he managed to enjoy freedom for as long as five weeks. And the police were playing a good game. Catching criminals like Blink isn't easy. Glasgow's underworld always had undercover cops working it. That's when agents infiltrate criminal gangs posing as criminals to get insider information for the police. It's a job that very few can pull off, only for the absolute toughest nuts. Undercover agents undergo very thorough selection process and training. Undercover work is one of the most stressful jobs that really takes a toll on a man's entire life. Thanks. A lot of, uh, you could even lose yourself and forget. Forget what you in there for. Swallowed up by the lifestyle. Pause. This gentleman is Simon McLean, and he worked as an undercover police officer for guess how long? 20 years. He is retired now, and it's painful for him to speak of those times. First time. Wasn't he on Lad Bible? Or one of them um, interview shows? I think he was. I spoke about it to my colleague Tom, and that night, after opening up a wee bit about it, it got me thinking about all the things, all the lies, all the deceit, all the friends that I could have had that I'd betrayed. So that's what we did. And that mentally, that's it. So it's easier to shut it away and not, not think about it. Have you ever heard of the Stockholm Syndrome? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Where people are kidnapped and then they become associated. Yeah, yeah. But, and here's another thing that I really want to convey to you. In order for me to be to infiltrate a criminal organisation, I have to make friendships. I have to become trusted. And you can do that through football, through drinking, through drugs, through playing pool, as I described to you earlier. But you have to have commonality, and then you make friends. Simon tells me that many of his fellow undercover cops ended up with severe PTSD. Some became addicted to drugs, and quite a few even tried to take their own lives. Living imaginable that is that is sounds about right being a double life in a hostile environment for decades can literally drive people crazy and if they are discovered they risk being tortured and brutally killed for being a rat a snitch that oh, you've been run, uncovered yeah. yeah because you can't just run what, away what do, you in, <laughs> what do you feel inside at the moment scared yeah but you can't give that away so the way you deal with and and let me give you an example, right? I remember a, a guy who said he was going to shoot the police. He was going to kill a policeman rather than be taken alive. He was on the run. And when we arrested him, uh, we rammed his car, and a shot went off, actually. Uh, and I jumped out of my side of the car, and I had a baseball bat. Mm -hmm. And I jumped on, on his car, and I was smashing the window. This guy said he's going to shoot a policeman. And by the time he did that, and I was smashed the windscreen, he was arrested. Oh. So the way you deal with threat is with violence and with bravado and with wow. looniness. Yeah. You never go, you never shrink, you never go, oh well, you've caught me now. An undercover cop must become a trusted member of the gang. He must think like a criminal, act like a criminal, smash cars with a bat if needs be, listen to the same music and drink the same drinks. It's impossible to just pretend to do all that. He must become a real criminal in order to do this job. And I'll tell you a story. That's why a lot of people get lost in it. In Too Deep. Y'all seen that movie? The American movie In Too Deep? This is what that's about story of when I was very young caught my very first undercover operation. Myself and a colleague who I had never met before, we met in Oban, we were given a, a, a hotel to go to and we were electricians, that was our cover. But at night time, or any time, we were to go into this pub and over the, the four day period, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, build up a knowledge and rapport about what was happening as far as drugs were concerned. So the first night we went in there, Anton, so we were already pretty drunk mm -hmm. and we ended up fighting with each other. And they had to get split up and, and packed off out of the pub, kicked out of the pub. Mm. Away home in disgrace. <laughs> we made up pretty quick and went back to the hotel room and the next morning we realised we might have messed this up completely. Mm -hmm. uh, so we went away back to the pub at lunchtime. We had overalls on and whatnot mm -hmm. uh, to apologise to the owner and the, the staff 
because inadvertently yeah, we yeah. were assholes, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and that monster. night we discovered you could buy anything. You know, it's like any pub in the city yeah. now. You can buy anything anywhere within a few minutes. Mm -hmm. If you've got money in your pocket and you're looking for something, then it'll, it'll appear very shortly. That's exactly how undercover agents like Simon finally caught Ian McDonald. He walked the streets of Glasgow for five weeks as a free man, whilst almost the entire police force of Scotland was looking for him. I knew they were looking for me. So I arranged to meet uh, a girlfriend at a Chinese restaurant. I hadn't saw her for five weeks. Five minutes later, two people walked into the restaurant, a man and a woman, and I just knew they were police. So I says to the girlfriend, yeah, well, I says, by the way, they're undercover police. And she went to me, don't be silly, they're a lovely couple. And she says to me, if you keep saying the police, she says, I'm going to walk out. But guys like Blink have a strong instinct for things like this. That couple indeed was a pair of undercover agents. He figured them out just as he figured out at least a dozen more people around him who were in fact cops. But it was too late. For I ain't gonna lie, Blink got it on, doesn't he? He got Prada shoes, what is this, a Gucci shirt? The couple of us were there, there was a takeaway section. And it was a Tuesday night. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and. Mm -hmm. I wondered, I said, this place is very busy for a Tuesday. There was about 12 or 14 people came in for carryouts. They were all police. I remember the story. They were all police. So see the lovely couple, which my girlfriend says, they two are just a lovely couple. They were the first two that jumped on me at the table. Oh. And all the rest of them all jumped on us and they got me up in the air. The wee Chinese guy, he ran over. And because I was going blue, they were not releasing my grip. I thought he was going to shout, leave him alone, you're going to kill him. Uh -huh. Do you know what he shouted? What? You're under arrest. He says, who's paying this bill? <laughs> through, through the tab. Uh -huh. So at that, the police even found that a bit funny, they, they relaxed my grip. But then things got serious. Blink got 10 years of jail time. About half that time, he was a troublemaker even better than 19. Then in prison, he got into fights with other inmates and even with prison guards. You'd think he'd settle for a different life when he got out in 2001, but he didn't. He started using and joined a gang again. Uh, I'd done something to somebody, right? Mm -hmm. And a year later, everybody was. Yeah, some people take prison as a crash course. As a school of criminality. Said to me, you, you, you're, you're dead. So a year later, uh, the bomb was under the car on the Friday. This was 2009. The police says if that bomb went off, uh, they've took half the building down. So I made a big decision though, I mean, I moved back into my mother's. I said, right, what am I going to do? And I started writing a book. Glasgow has become a lot more peaceful in the last 15 years. Despite the enormous toll on their lives, the Glasgow police has succeeded in driving down the crime and violence rate in the city. Today, London is in fact more criminalized than Scotland's largest city. It's true that Glasgow has some seedy areas, but overall, it no longer lives up to the title of the criminal capital of Europe. Glasgow got some nice Every time I see any Glasgow documentary or Scotland, it got nice, uh, nice art, nice murals everywhere. You know, my first impression of Glasgow is it's not as scary as people picture it. I mean, seriously, here I am walking a street downtown. The city is located on hilly terrain, so you've got lots of really nice perspectives. For example, this road goes down and you can see that big, tall, neo-gothic church tower in the distance. And it's both massive and majestic <coughs> and old. To me, the city looks Very a lot nice. like Edinburgh, which is one of the most beautiful cities in terms of architecture that I've ever seen. Or, for example, look here, that railway station once had the fame of the most dangerous one in all of Great Britain. Lots of very dark business was conducted there on a daily basis. But as far as the architecture goes, it's all truly amazing here. Look at these buildings with all these clocks and towers and all the ornaments all over them. 
brings to mind the amazing buildings in the Harry Potter universe. Stili prem od Harry Pottera. Recently, Glasgow has been among the top tourist destinations in the world. Look at this. It's Recently, crazy. Glasgow has been among the top tourist de You know how long it takes to do something like this? this destinations in the world. And the city authorities are trying hard to dispel its This is insane. Former reputation of a sin city. Sorry, yeah, it's all right. Thank you very much. Boy, I got that fish and chips, don't he? Well, gangs or no gangs, a fellow needs to eat, right? I've got all the Scottish signature food here. I'll tell you in detail what we've got here and then we'll try it. Right, so here I've got haggis. It's made of sheep's pluck. That's hard. I've had haggis before, but what is all that other stuff? That's liver and lungs all minced together with spices. And it's traditionally cooked while encased in the animal's... While encased in the animal's abomasum. Uh, uh, Stomach. Abomasum, abomasum, uh, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. It's the fourth stomach of the ruminant animal. Basically, it's a sheep's stomach, the one where digestion takes place. Oh well, okay, sounds very appetizing, right? I am all eat it. What is what is the rest of impatience? But I'll be honest, I already ate it before knowing what it's made of, and I liked it. So now I'm going to try it as a newly enlightened man. <laughs> I'm so hungry that I don't give the slightest of dams what it's made of, honestly. <laughs> You'll probably see my face is getting red. That's because I'm out all day in this cold weather. This here is fish and chips. That's fried fish in batter, and it's a nice big, big chunk of it. Food for simple. Typical Brit Caribbean, man. TLO, leave a like, comment, subscribe. Very enlightening documentary. Covered a lot of bases. Oh wait, wait, we're not done. Hold on. Let's get let's all right, we're done with the gangs food. will become a part of go. the history of this city. But I think that they won't be completely forgotten. Because gangs here mean a lot more than just some local punks hanging out together. They've got a culture of their own. I realized it after I left the guy's friend's house and we said goodbye. The guys right. yeah, well, guys, I am a bit flabbergasted because I never expected to get this kind of experience, such engagement. Um. These guys had no motive to talk to me, or I don't understand what it could be. If they're interested in getting an online following, why do they cover up their faces? That's always what I think it is unprecedented access to all gang activity what do you gain out of it so a little bit of notoriety I think now it's because they really love you can see that they have marked every corner every house with their gang signature and I think that the gang really gives them something that they value so much You're right, that they are willing to talk about it and to show it to others. That's really what it is. I was pretty much all right all the time I was with them. I wasn't scared out of my senses or anything like that, but I was really shocked to see that this thing is in fact real. Here they are, all these guys standing right in front of me, telling and showing me things. Do you know Bible story and some patient instruction before leaving after or right or something about this? <laughs> Test it for heaven because I'm living in hell. What did he say? Alright. Tell the little like comment.